biggest thing is that in the last few weeks, we've finally made progress toward Mount Shark. Now, if you remember, we were we spent the last six months holed up in this little bay we called Yellowknife Bay. It actually, it has a lot more similarity to a real bay because it looks like there was once water there, possibly standing water right there, making a little bay out of the place. So it was a very fantastic uh, place to go, great place to discover new things about Mars. In particular, we discovered that there were places, in fact, this one place, that certainly has, has evidence that that Mars once a habitable place. Yeah, the big discovery for me over the last over the last year has been that the surface evidence that Mars could have supported life, that it was habitable. That was what the mission was about. You know, the, it wasn't about just landing on Mars. It was about landing on Mars to find out whether those whether Mars was ever suitable for life. And the answer seems to be yes. The first hole that was ever drilled on another planet by a robot turns up what you're looking for. So, you know, usually you have to sort of poke a hole here, one over there, move around, revisit your geological map, try to get a better understanding of things. And so for us to basically hit pay dirt on the first drill hole is, is, really, is really remarkable. To hit the jackpot kind of in that sense so quickly, um, you know, in some ways you think, oh, it's sort of like, oh, well, we've already, you know, climax and we're done. Um, but yet, I think that's what's amazing about this. This wasn't this target that we went to isn't even the target that the science team was initially super excited about, and yet already incredible evidence. Um, so I'm actually really excited for us to get to where the scientists really think that kind of the juice is, go through the layers uh, of, you know, of Martian history, get that story that Mars has to tell that kind of we can see just layer by layer preserved there, and then uh, and see what it tells us. We have these hills um, out in front of us as part of Mount Sharp and, and just waiting to be explored um, keeps us you know, excited and going um, in terms of looking forward to the future. That first drill shot, even before we actually took the sample, seeing that it was gray inside there, not the red that we're all so familiar with on Mars, that's such a powerful image for me. Um, and, I, and I think that's kind of what this mission is all about. We're, we're really cracking the, you know, the Martian story. Uh, for us, it's drive, drive, drive. Not stop and look. Uh, well, you know, we'll stop and look a little bit, but, you know, we've, we've got uh, probably a couple of silver bullets that we'll use where we, we see things that we think are interesting enough, you know, we might want to hunker down for a week and look in more detail, and, and maybe on the way across we might even decide to drill another rock. Just have to see how it goes. So right now we're, um, we started a trek um, over to the base of Mount Sharp, and so the next uh, few months are going to be a lot of driving ahead. Um, we use the orbiter data um, to help provide a road map um, of you know, the, the, what we call our rapid tra transit route um, for the, the overall path of how to get to where we're going. Uh, but the science team has identified these geological waypoints along the way. I think uh, you know, it's still been the, the goal to get to, to Mount Sharp because we can see you know, from orbit that the, the evidence of, uh, of that habitability is even stronger there. Um, in some ways, we didn't necessarily expect it to be in the in the landing lifts where we were, or at least didn't need it to be. So uh, the hope is that we'll find even bigger and better stuff out there. It's hard to tell from orbit. You know, you're looking at these pictures from space, and you're looking down and say, well, what is that feature? We don't know. We'll have to wait till we get there. And it might be something very interesting, and we might find ourselves stuck in a yet another Yellowknife Bay with some fantastic science going on. But, um, but right now, our plan isn't to do that. Our plan is to keep going. We know that the base of Mount Sharp has this hematite-enriched unit. And then we know above that, we've got something with phyllosilicates. And then above that, we've got something that has mostly sulfates. So in a general way, of course, we'd like to tap each one of those three layers. But what target we're going to go to in particular, I think, will become a matter of judgment based on looking at the details of the high-rise image once we've got our path pretty well straightened out. And then we're going to look at the mass cam data to see what's in the distant foreground, what looks interesting, and then we'll approach one of them. I think the most exciting thing coming up is reaching these fantastic, the foothills and the canyons with all this wonderful layered terrain. I mean, when we get up there and we see these walls of, of mountains on either side of you, uh, with incredible wind-carved structures. I mean, this is an area that's been exposed to winds and, and to the elements for hundreds of millions, if not billions of years. And so that does something to a train. 
You know, uh, e even though the atmosphere of Mars is very thin, when the wind can really kick up, it gradually wears away. So you see interesting winds carved structures. So it, it could be a very dramatically beautiful place. I, and of course, but certainly one of the hopes we have is that maybe in these layers, we might find residual organic residue from a time in Mars when, when organics was, uh, was playing a role in Mars' in Mars's, uh, uh, ecology. Space.com.